This is cool. You know what's cool about this too? Is that it's not full of like hundreds of people because you have to do an almost five mile hike to get here. definitely feels a lot more vibrant and busy in the summertime compared to the last time that we were here. There are lots and lots of people driving around today. such a beautiful area and there's so much to do here so this boondocking spot is uh right above twin lakes but there's a lot of boondocking on all different sides of the lake so if you go south down by the dam over here there's a uh, boondocking by the outlet which is kind of like a nice little river we saw some big fifth wheels over there and then if you go to the north side it's kind of like where we are up here there's boondocking all down over here and there's some even on the far side as well that goes towards Aspen up Independence Pass. And then you can also go around the lake to this side. Where is it? This side of the dam and there's more. So tons of boondocking. Obviously it's a 14 uh, day stay limit. A lot to do. So Mount Albert is over here, which is like, I don't know, one of the highest in Colorado. You can hike it literally from like right here. It's a very long hike from my understanding. Obviously there's all the recreation of Twin Lakes. And then Buena Vista is about 25 minutes south and Leadville, uh, you know, the highest incorporated town or whatever is like 20 minutes north. <laughs> so this is a trailhead here it's called interlaken interlaken if you look on hiking websites it does say that uh four-wheel drive is recommended as you can tell there's you know, four runner subaru outbacks little mazda car so you can make it in two-wheel drive to this trailhead here All right so today we got both the little ones trying to do as much of the hike as they can we got to start them eventually we've been carrying them way too much Ready? Do you want mommy to take one? Thank you. you are you gonna use one? Oh, I want. I'm gonna have both. Okay. Lincoln's hiking. Lincoln's got his hiking backpack with dinos on it and his hat with whales. All right, guys, so we zoom in, you can see our trailers up on the ridge. There we are. That's cool. Got a little, guessing a burned area here. We could actually see this across the lake from our camp. It's always a bummer, but. Oh, my wife said this fire just happened in June. So very recent little burn area. All right, so Lincoln made it three quarters of a mile and now he's in his backpack. It's always tough because, you know, the more he hikes, the better he'll get at it and the more he'll enjoy it. But at the same time, we have almost a five mile hike today. So it's like trying to get the hike done and see what we want to see. So to give and a take. Are you sleepy? Yeah. Hmm. All of a sudden we popped out onto what appears to be a road. Uh, I'm guessing this is the road that went around the lake that washed out and never got fixed, which eventually led to the demise of this resort. It's kind of cool. We did hiking, huh? Well, we made it, guys. First building, the first uh, abandonment. I think this is the dude's house, right? I believe so. Pretty freaking cool. They actually moved this building. Get it out of harm's way of the water. 
pretty rad that it's in so intact. This one you can actually go in and check out, which we will be doing. Look at the view here. This used to be a resort back in the day. This, this was the private residence. We're gonna go see a couple more buildings a little further down. All right, we're gonna go check it out. Welcome to the Dexter house. Uh, oops, bonk. Whoa, this is really cool. Wow. I love all the woodwork. Look at the floors. This is cool. You know what's cool about this too? Is that it's not full of like hundreds of people because you have to do an almost five mile hike to get here. Whoa. Makes it a little cooler considering that you had to work for a little bit of hike. Oh, look at the little bathroom. See a bathroom, bud? Oh, look at this tin tub. A little Harry Potter bathroom. Okay. Okay, let's go upstairs. Whoa. Look at the detailed woodwork. It's railing. Very cool, huh? Do you like it? Yeah. Do you want to walk? Okay. Okay. Oh, this is cool. <laughs> Love the architecture. Like the sloped in corners. This is super rad. Obviously it's so well preserved because the, I think the National Forest take care, takes care of it. Nice little bedroom. What do we think, Keel? I live here. Yeah, turd, rat turds and all? Wow, buddy, what do you think? Okay, follow Keel. You gotta hold the hand okay. with this hand. Okay, go, Daddy will help. You just go up the steps. Yep. Go up the steps. This is very difficult with a toddler. Hey, Keel. Yeah. Can you grab this child? Yeah. <laughs> just you can pull him up by his arm. Ah. Off, is it? Hasn't yet. Be careful of this hole. You don't come over here. Okay, here, hold Daddy's hand. Woo! We're in the steeple thing. I don't know what you call this. Lookout tower. Between the lakes, in 1879, John Stanley saw the potential to make a recreation site and a resort. He bought this for $3,250 in 1883. Whoa, this is what remains. Apparently his house was that first one that we checked out. There's a bunch of different outbuildings and then the actual resort itself, this larger building over here that looks like a Kind of looks like a hotel of some sort, you know. Just pick up this new Anchor charger right here. And it's great because we film with our phones. We use GPS for hiking. We use it for getting to the trail. And the freaking battery is always dying. What's cool is it has built-in cords so you don't lose them. iPhone for you iPhone weirdos. Us Android guys over here. Boom. And I think it's like 20,000 whatever they say. I'll put the specs in the description and uh, we'll link it. And it's got a digital display, see that? It's 90%. It's pretty compact, pretty cool. We'll link it for you guys. Check it out. Basically, the great demise of the Interlaken Resort was the dam. They built the dam on the south side of town and it, it kept raising the water levels, flooding buildings, and then it I guess there's a bridge that went across Twin Lakes or yeah, something? Yeah, it basically washed out part of the bridge and part of the road that was built. And then it was really, really expensive to build a road that went around the lake instead. and Caused a lot of yada, issues. Yada, yada, and, and now it's closed. Yep. But we did read a plaque saying that uh, soon you might be able to stay in the gentleman's home. That was the first building we looked at. So you could like hike out and camp. That's kind of cool. 
So the Dexter house behind me was actually moved 150 feet back up shore because as of right now, it would be underwater if it were in its original location. Lincoln did about a mile today, which is pretty rad. Pretty good for him. Overall, great hike. It's pretty flat. Highly recommend. It's nice to have a payoff of the buildings and the lake view the whole way. Uh, this is Interlaken Trail in Twin Lakes, Colorado. All right, guys. So our camp spot is really beautiful. And as you can tell, people are getting married up here. That's cool. They're having a little wedding. I like it. You like the puddle? Yeah. Again? Okay, go. Go, go, go. Today we're going to go to Leadville and we're going to kind of explore that, do a few fun things in that area. But uh, overall, this is an incredibly awesome boondocking area. The view is just insane. Like this is, this is our house. We always, uh, what we find funny is the fact that um, we're here in a trailer and we have these million dollar views and we have these million dollar views all the time and we don't have to pay the million dollars. We also plan on going towards Aspen in a day or two and doing some hikes over there, checking out the town of Aspen and uh, kind of showing you Independence Pass and all that jazz. <laughs> So today we're here in Silverton, Colorado, and we are gonna walk, and Lincoln is gonna bike some of the Mineral Belt Trail. Basically, the city made this 11 and a half. Bike, bike, bike. Yeah, yeah bike -o. Made this 11 and a half mile paved biking, walking, hiking, running path that goes through this old mining area. So there's a lot of placards to read and a lot of cool stuff to see along the way. And we're just gonna kind of walk a bit of it and then turn around and back check. But a lot of people do the whole thing and the whole loop goes around the whole town. And like through town as well. And it's of course a beautiful view because we're up here in Leadville at 10,000 feet. Uh, so you got a lot of the beautiful mountains off in the distance, turquoise lake over there. It's just really awesome. Really nice. It's chilly. And, and it's chilly, <laughs> like literally it's 10 a.m. It's uh, August 25th. Maybe? So yeah, we're getting towards the end of August and it was like 59 degrees in our truck before we just stepped out of it. So should be a fun day. And then later on, we're gonna go check out the town of Leadville. So over 180 years have passed since Abe Lee discovered the tip of the iceberg in one of the richest ore bodies in the country. Wow. And it sounds like they kind of just discarded all of their tailings, all of their equipment, everything. That's why it's spread out all over the town and there's so much to see. Oh, it's also a ski trail in the winter, which makes total sense. The grade is never more than 7%. And the low point is uh, by the college and Springtown is 9,000. 900 feet and the high is 10,600 feet. We didn't plan super accordingly. We only had this light little blanket. So we put this on Hudson. Uh, obviously mom brought him a hat and then she's using her nursing cover to cover him up. So yeah, hubby. So you keep, keep the wind off of him. <laughs> Works well, I think. Linko, is this cool? This is called cribbing. I don't know why it's called that. Well, there's a plaque right there. So I was really curious to see what cribbing is all about. This, this says, Mineral Belt Trail passes between the crib walls erected to facilitate the segregated grade crossing. Oh, yeah, if you look, so there's a big grade here that went across, so they basically wanted a trail through, yeah. and this is how they cut it, and they build it up so it doesn't backfill, like it doesn't just landslide back in. Yeah, like the stuff can it's go pretty cool. That gap. And this right here is why we like this baby trend two-in-one stroller. I mean, you don't have to have, be a full-time RVer, but look, Lincoln's in there with his bike, Hudson's in the front, and then we still got plenty of storage for random stuff 
underneath Hudson. You know, it's got the brakes, it's got the push handle, and it also has a wagon handle up front where you can pull the thing. So, pretty convenient. I like it. I love this thing. It's big, definitely. Um, going into stores and like downtowns, it can kind of be cumbersome just because it's so large, but it's seriously awesome and super versatile. Um, I love it. Yeah, when you're doing like a like a big day outdoors, it's like super convenient. So it seems like the mine workers would work 10 hours a day, seven days a week, underground a lot of the time. They'd make $2.50 per day. Apparently it was not that much. Kind of cool. So one of the big things that they used to mine here was silver. And then there was a crash in the 1800s. And uh, then they started to discover a bunch of zinc. And they started mining zinc here, which kind of revitalized the town. Um, just interesting how you can find so many different minerals in these certain areas. Oh, also, one of the main things to kind of do in this area, especially on this trail, is there's a lot of, uh, a lot, a couple companies that rent e-bikes. What was the price on that? We decided to skip it because it's a little hard with the kids and all the stuff. The best price I found was a three-hour uh, e-bike rental session for $70 per, per adult. Per bike. So, so 70 bucks for three hours. Yeah, it would have been like 150 plus dollars for us okay. and the thing that you know didn't work for us is they didn't have like one of those carts that we could put the kids in we decided to just walk this is one well not one this is what we love about rv life so much we're constantly outside and um we're exploring places we've never seen before i mean a lot of people will kind of do their one two-week vacation per year and that's it for us it's every weekend a new place and uh just constantly seeing new things and for lincoln riding new places it's just a really cool way to live, and I think it's going to be great for the kids growing up this way. Melissa and I have been to Leadville a couple times. But for some reason, it seems like there's a lot more open right now. I think last time we were here in the spring and a lot of stuff hadn't opened yet. It's just a really cool town, a lot of cool buildings, shops, you know, you know, a normal thing. Yeah, but uh, man, people that live here have got to deal with some intense winters because we're at such high elevation. Just ate at Leadville's Legendary Saloon. The food was pretty good. My only complaint was probably that the fries weren't crispy enough. Uh, I got a Reuben sandwich. It was pretty dang good. Melissa got a chicken cantori sandwich that was very good. Yes. Very good. Lincoln, Lincoln got fresh fries with and uh, with ketchup. And then we also got poutine fries that had like a spicy kind of like chili with like a pork and then there was a fried egg on top fried egg was pork good. it was, it was quite good flavorful. food was great the atmosphere was awesome that was kind of the main reason we went in there that and the fact that they had french fries because lincoln wanted fries i'd recommend it maybe maybe ask for your fries extra extra crispy that, that's uh that's it yeah legendary silver dollar saloon which is not only the oldest uh, bar in Leadville but the fourth oldest in the entire state of Colorado and and I heard a rumor that Doc Holliday used to play the piano in there uh, I don't
don't know if it's true. I just oh, heard some fancy. some customer. He was so excited. He walked like straight in beeline right towards it and took a video clip of it. And then he was telling his friend like, oh yeah, supposedly Doc Holliday uh, played this piano. And so I just can't get over how like in the summer, it's just a completely different town compared to the spring when we had gone before. So many more shops open, just like vibrant. There's tons of flowers. Like it's just crazy what, you know, I guess it's almost six months would do by the time yeah, we were there. A few Last months time. of seasonal difference yeah. will make. <laughs> really cool town and great day.